Day 14, meal two, strange but true fact. Okay, um, four and a half hours since I last saw you. And uh, so here's what I'm looking at here. What do you see about, the, what do you notice about this? Do you notice anything about this? Do you notice anything particularly about this? Does it look different? Does it look different from the prior plate that we looked at that was meal number one? Okay, well, here's what's different. I started here and I had um, two banana chips and then I, there was two pecans here and uh, I ate one. There was two almonds, I ate one. There was two pistachios, I ate one. I was like going around the circle here, like around the clock of uh, interesting uh, breakfast uh, foods. Cashews, I ate one. Brazil nuts, I ate one. Macadamia nuts, I ate one. Pepitos, I ate a little kind of a handful. I picked up a little handful like that. Apples, I ate like two, like this. And then I took my pea milk, right? And I drank my pea milk like this. Exactly like that. It was half a cup. I drank it down. When I got to the end of my little circle of um, nutty breakfast, I was full. So, and so four and a half hours later, I'm not hungry. Not even slightly. I've been seeing clients. I, I did a little bit of work on my computer. A um, little bit of breathing practice, a little bit of mindfulness. Just a tiny amount of movement. It was actually slightly more than tiny amount. Um, let's say 10 minutes of slow to moderate effort. It wasn't huge. I wasn't like, you know, lifting an earth-shaking amount of weight. I wasn't lifting any weight at all except just moving my body in a particular way. Do you remember how we got on that step and we stepped up and then down? I'm, I'm simulating it up and then down off the step uh, in my studio. Let's just say that it was like that. I mean, I could show you. I was with a bag like this. But here, let's come to my studio. Come out here with me real quick. Okay. So I was here. Okay, so I went one two, three, four, and I played a game. So imagine you're on the other side over here and my client was here, we're, we were talking about communication, right? So I send it, you gotta keep your hands up a little bit, he sends it back to me. So this flow back and forth, back and forth, we're sending it back and forth like this for about 10 minutes and just talking, so it's a little bit of movement. But you gotta see, my stance is my knees are bent, okay? And I'm like this position here with bent knees, right? Moving for about 10 minutes, okay? So after about 10 minutes, my client who's super fit, right? He's saying, whoa, I, I gotta rest my shoulder because it's holding this position and, and, move, and moving, right? Moving even with, with just, it's not that much work, just this holding this position actually was a lot of effort. Try to do anything for 10 minutes. Try to just stand still for 10 minutes. Try to just lift your arms above your head, even if it's one arm, and breathe out and release. Do that for 10 minutes. That's a workout, all right? So what we did before, we stepped onto the edge of our little stage here that we built for our kids here and we're stepping up and down for a period of time and this provided a little bit of work right all right that's maybe the idea so i did a little bit of work kind of like that and um i had half of what i laid out so here's what i'm going to do and this is the cashew milk. So for breakfast, I had half a cup of pea milk. For my second meal of the day, I'm going to have just about a whole cup of cashew milk. So I want to um, increase my diversity here a little bit. And I'm going to go around the circle and eat one of each of these things. That means these nuts will be gone, but I'll be left with two macadamia nuts. 
at the center of this, I have a raspberry and a blueberry. These are dried raspberry and a dried blueberry. And I just want a little bit of the flavor of that. And I just want a little bit of what the nutrient is in that. I'm giving my body a rich, diverse variety of nutrients. I'm thinking about food as my medicine, but I'm also embracing joyously, appreciating joyously, embracing the diversity of plant life and bringing it into my body in a happy and somewhat predictable way. You know, I'm giving my body the tools it needs. I'm delivering it. I'm, I've been playing with delivering the tools, delivering the resources to the trillions of cells of my body, like just in time by paying attention to like, okay, what, what am I feeling? What is my body asking me for? I'm trying to pay attention to that. And I think this is sending a message to my body. I, I don't know, the, the, the response back is apparently there's some kind of balance that has naturally occurred without me trying really. I'm not hungry, not, I'm not even slightly hungry. Now, as a courtesy to the, the entire population of the city and the culture that I am the mayor of, all right, I am going to deliver a little bit of resources and I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask my body to, to do what it knows how to do and I'm trusting everybody to work together on the same team, bringing balance and joy inside of me and also assisting with bringing it outside of me harmoniously with everything and everyone around me. Now, I'm not hungry, so if I just sat and ate a lot of food, that would be the same as all of a sudden just dropping off a huge amount of resources and saying, okay, everybody deal with this. And, I mean, how often do we do that to our bodies without even knowing it? We go and we eat and we have, because it may be a bite of pizza, and because it tastes good, we have another bite. Because it tastes good, another bite, and then another bite. We have a slice and then another slice. I don't even, I can't even tell you for myself. I'll speak for myself. I can eat an entire large pizza by myself, all right? Now, I hate to admit that, but I've actually done that. And it's, it's as though the more you eat, the more you can eat. But you think about how much I'm giving my body to do. What's my body supposed to do? I mean, all the workers in my body, what are they going to, they're going to stop working? No, they're going to keep working. They're going to do the best they can. They're going to take those resources, pull out what they need to actually do their work. And now it's kind of like, well, what do we do with the rest of this stuff? We got to do something with it, right? So they pack it away as fat. The sh pizza, the dough of the pizza turns into sugar. They turn it into sugar. They use it for energy. Now, if I'm not expending that amount of energy, then they're going to take that resource, turn it into fat, save it for later. That begins to clog our arteries, clog our system in all sorts of ways. What, what are my workers supposed to do if all of a sudden I just keep having a huge delivery, a huge delivery? Every day I'm a caveman. I go out honey, and I bring, here's another mammoth. We don't need another mammoth. We've got plenty of food to eat. We need to build shelters or we need to go out and get firewood. We need to, you know, in caveman days maybe, but if I kept going out and getting a mammoth and bringing it in, what we have to, we can't waste it. We have to somehow process the mammoth. And so think of ourselves as basically providing resources for our village that we're in charge of. Now, I am not hungry at all, so my village is saying, hey, everything is good. We're in a place of balance. So I'm going to be here like, well, okay, so here's just a little bit for you just in case we need it. Not a lot, just a little. If you need more, I'm, I'm saying this to myself right now as I'm explaining it to you. I mean, I mean, I've invited you into my life here in a very intimate way. This is how I'm working with the news that I got two weeks ago. All right. And the way that I am allowing and making space for 
my body to do what it already knows how to do. So I'm saying, okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of resources. If you need more, just tell me. Send me a note. The note, think of a note not as a written note. Think of a note now as like a, a note on a guitar string. Bung. It's a, it has a sound. Think of a note now as a vibration. Mm -hmm. Think of a vibration now also as um, a feeling. It goes with the feeling. You know, when you listen to music, you might notice that you feel, you feel something. So let's just say that the note that's being sent to me by my body is a feeling. And it's a feeling and there's a certain vibration. And depending on where the vibration is, the vibration is kind of helping me to, when I tune into it and learn this language, it's unique. Your unique inner language, your body knows how to speak to you. Don't make your body learn English or another language like using words like this. Let's get down into this place. Feel what we're feeling. Let's open, just kind of open, open to the language that our body is speaking to us moment by moment. Try to feel our way into that. What are... When we need resources, our body's going to give us a feeling, okay? And the more we are in a communication, the more we say through listening, by paying attention, and by reacting purposefully in a way that's in harmony with our intentions, then the, the more that this communication cycle is going to flow back and forth, back and forth. My body needs more of something in particular, I'm saying, send me a note, send me a vibration. I will listen. I will give you what you need. I will provide what we need to be able to live abundantly, happily, joyously. Your wish is my command. My body's not asking for cheeseburgers anymore. That was a kind of a, almost like a different part of me. That's that that one guy that is, it's maybe that guy's disappeared. Maybe that whatever that energy was that wrapped around that was just the energy saying we need a little more fat, we need some enzymes in the cheese, and that's a delicious way to get a few enzymes and some fat. And the the meat is we need more protein, and we need some fat because. Yeah, as cave men, men and cave women, we were probably predominantly vegetarian. And whenever we uh, could either run fast enough or hunt well enough or work together as a team well enough, then, then we'd be able to bring in something that involved meat and bones and marrow. Okay, And uh, that was a joyous day. And as cave men and cave women, we appreciated and we honored the animals that were part of our life. We celebrated, we celebrated our life and the life of that animal, knowing that it is becoming part of us, and therefore we are part of it, and we are part of a greater whole in a cycle of life. Um, in the process was an enormous amount of respect and appreciation, um, reverence, and so here... Now, I'm touching this place of communication, this place of honoring, this place of appreciation, a place of reverence for the food that I'm eating, the connection that I'm feeling, the, my role in the job that I'm doing is being somewhat of the mayor of the, or the chief of my tribe here, my trillions of cells working together harmoniously and I'm sending a strong message by the way that I'm eating. I'm saying I'm going to give you what you provide. I'm not going to overwhelm you with a mammoth or a cheeseburger or a pizza every meal and make you have to work harder than what you need to. I'm going to give you what you need. 
You can be at ease. You can rest. You can bring the balance that we all want. We can have a harmonious village. In fact, we do. Thank you very much. All right. Day 14, meal number two.